Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Monday Night Raw review. And Monday Night Raw tonight, another Monday, another Monday Night Raw awful show it was. This show was absolutely god awful tonight, and it, it was Championship uh, Monday, as they were calling it. And you had the Raw Tag Team Championship on the line, you had the Women's Championship on the line, the Jobber Ninja Turtle 24-7 Championship on the line, and also the Women's Tag Team Championship. But overall, Monday Night Raw tonight was just god-awful. And I'm doing uh, this video uh, like late. It's uh, 1 o'clock now. I was just watching uh, my good buddy uh, Wrestling Mixtapes uh, live stream of his uh, Monday Night Raw review and just uh, watching his live stream, chatting in uh, his uh, stream. So, but does a really good, uh, does a really good live stream. Uh, definitely uh, go check out his channel. Uh, Wrestling Mixtape is uh, his uh, YouTube channel name. Uh, give him a, a subscribe. Very uh, nice, very nice guy on here. You know what, let's jump right into the uh, review. Let's waste no time. Jump right into it. So Monday Night Raw opened up tonight with the WWE Champion, Drew McIntyre. McIntyre made his way out. He got in the ring. He was on the mic. And he ended up talking about how R-Truth accepted uh, the match on his behalf last week. And he ended up saying that it's time to move on, to look to the future. So then he got interrupted by Dolph Ziggler. So Dolph made his way out. And as we all know, uh, in an article last week, it was announced that Dolph Ziggler uh, was traded to Money Night Raw from SmackDown because uh, AJ Styles ended up going from Money Night Raw to uh, SmackDown. So they end up trading Dolph Ziggler from SmackDown to My Night Raw. So Dolph got in the ring and Dolph ended up mentioning how him and also another guy who got traded from SmackDown to My Night Raw. So now he announced that him and Robert Roode, both of them, were sent from SmackDown to Monday Night Raw because of AJ Styles getting sent to SmackDown. So Dolph ended up saying that he wants a shot at McIntyre and the WWE Championship. So Dolph ended up uh, mentioning about his past with McIntyre. You know, uh, Dolph ended up bringing uh, McIntyre uh, back. Uh, back in uh, 2016. So he was taking credit for uh, their success together. So Dolph ended up saying that, you know, McIntyre is a dominant champion because it was all thanks to him. So Dolph ended up uh, wanting a match with him for the WWE Championship. So McIntyre ended up asking Dolph if he really wants it. So McIntyre ended up pulling up the championship and he ended up taunting Ziggler uh, with the title. And looks like, you know, we're going to be getting this match at Extreme Rules. So it's going to be uh, McIntyre versus uh, Dolph for the WWE Championship at Extreme Rules. And they announced it. Uh, earlier in the night, so it's official. So we're going to begin that at Extreme Rules. So, but overall, uh, the segment, you know, it was decent. It was a decent open to uh, Monday Night Raw. You know, it was good that they started out with Drew McIntyre uh, coming out. So I thought I thought that was uh, the right way to uh, open uh, Monday Night Raw. 
And now we went from McIntyre and Dolph to Nia Jax. So Nia Jax ended up coming out. The uh, commentators end up saying that she's not scheduled uh, to appear. Nia Jax ended up grabbing a chair. And she ended up uh, sliding the chair into the ring. Ended up setting up the chair uh, in the middle of the ring. She then took a seat. And then Monday Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, Nia Jax was still in the ring. And she was complaining about unfairness. And she was doing that because of uh, her... Uh, again, screw last week because of uh, the referee. So she got interrupted by our troop, the Jobber Ninja Turtle 24 7 champion. So Nia Jax uh, was in the mood for our troop uh, stuff that he was doing. And Akira Tozawa suddenly appeared. And he was taunting our troop and Akira Tozawa's ninjas then appeared and they ended up chasing uh, our troop away. So we got the circus, our uh, troop running away and the circus of ninjas chasing our troop. So Nia Jax was uh, still in the ring and she went on about Charlotte, Charlotte Flair, getting what she wants. And hey, you know, I agree with Nia there. WWE is just giving Charlotte what she wants by putting her in the title picture every single time. This woman keeps on getting title shot after title shot after title shot. There's plenty of other women on, in this women's division that doesn't get title shots. You got Liv Morgan. You got Ruby Riot. You got... Bianca Belair, who hasn't been seen on Money I Raw. She recently was in a match on main event against Ruby Riot. How, how sad is that? So, Nia Jax ended up saying that she was cheated at Backlash and screwed over by another referee. And she ended up saying that Charlotte gets what she wants because her dad is Ric Flair. You know, I agree, I agree with Nia there. She gets what she wants because she's a flair. So Charlotte ended up making her way out. And then uh, then both Nia and Charlotte ended up uh, having words to say which I didn't give a shit. So, Nia ended up uh, fighting back as Charlotte ended up striking at Nia. And there was a brawl that ensued between Nia and Charlotte. Because Nia ended up saying, oh, you know, you never beat me. So, And then the referees end up running down to uh, break up the brawl. Charlotte ended up dropping Nia with a big boot, and that was that. But did not give a shit. Didn't give a shit about this whole segment. So then we had the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits. They were backstage. They end up saying that they are friends. But when the bell rings, it's on. Oh man, this this that whole storyline between the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits with this whole oh you could do good I could do better shit was fucking terrible. Start out with basketball, then axe throwing, bowling. They had a decathlon. Garbage. So then we had the Street Profits versus the Viking Raiders for the Raw Tag Team Championship. And this was a entertaining match, uh, in my opinion. This match kept me entertained. 
Uh, it wasn't a bad match. But uh, the Street Profits end up winning. They end up retaining the Raw Tag Team Championship. And post-match, Angel Garza and Andrade they end up attacking the Street Profits, Montez Ford and Angel Dawkins. Zelina Vega was uh, looking on. The Viking Raiders, Eric and Ivar, end up rushing back uh, to help uh, make the save. But Andrade and Selena Vega end up taunting them uh, from the floor. And there was a point where uh, during the, uh, the backstage segment with the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits, you had Zelina Vega uh, walk by and she had this uh, look on her face like, hmm. And then right from right there, I know that I knew that uh, Garza and Andrade was going to come uh, at the end. So it looks like the Street Profits are going to be facing Garza and Andrade. Uh, Andrade and uh, Garza are going to be next in line for the Raw Tag Team Championship. But overall, very entertaining match between the Prophets and the Raiders. And then we had Seth Rollins backstage. He was with his disciples, Austin Theory and Buddy Murphy. Rollins ended up saying that he has a message for, for Rey Mysterio tonight. And that will all be revealed. Yeah, because Rollins uh, ended up... Uh, end up inviting uh, Rey Mysterio to Monday Night Raw, as he announced last week. So, Seth Rollins was uh, backstage as uh, Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial. Rollins ended up saying that sometimes in life, we are destined for roles beyond our choices. He ended up saying that he did not choose to be the Monday Night Messiah, just as Rey didn't choose to be a sacrifice. You know, I'm saying that the difference is he embraced his role for the greater good. While Mysterio has been defiant and defiance breeds suffering. So Rollins then went on about how Mysterio is allowing his son to get involved in this situation. He's involved with Dominic to get in this whole thing. And Rollins end up saying, whatever becomes of Mysterio and Dominic from this moment, it's all going to be on Ray. So Rollins end up saying that the greater good is coming for us all. And there's nothing Ray can do to stop it. Rollins end up saying that he has, he has heard it. Says that legends never die, but they sure as hell can outlive their welcome. So that was what uh, Seth Rollins had to say, but it, it was okay. It was an okay uh, backstage promo. So then we saw Charlotte. She was shown walking out of a trainer's room. She was clutching her arm. Charlie Crusoe ended up asking uh, Charlotte if she's thought about postponing the uh, title match tonight against Asuka. Charlotte ended up telling Charlie Caruso that she doesn't postpone and that this is what they do and it's not valid. She ended up saying that her arm will be just fine holding up the Royal Women's Championship. So that was that. Then we saw Charlie Crusoe. She ended up walking up on uh, Zelina Vega, Angel Garza, and Andrade. Charlie Crusoe ended up asking about the unprovoked attack on the Street Profits from Garza and Andrade. Garza ended up telling uh, Crusoe about going for what you want when you know you want something. So he starts flirting. Uh, with uh, Charlie Crusoe, and then Zelina Vega end up stepping in, and she end up saying, "Now isn't the time for that." Zelina Vega end up telling uh, Charlie Crusoe that 
Her clients are, you, are a united front. And she ended up saying that they have to put their, difference, their differences aside and turn them into strengths. And that they will soon become champions. So that was basically that. And then we had the Royal Women's Championship match. Asuka versus Charlotte Flair for the thousand time. The match itself, it wasn't bad. It was a decent match. But, man, how many times is WWE going to keep putting Charlotte in the title picture and giving her a title shot after 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 title shot? After title shot? Come on. There's plenty of other women on the, on the women's division roster on Monday Night Raw. And you just keep giving it to Charlotte, 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 Charlotte. Enough is enough. I am tired of seeing Charlotte keep on getting in the title picture. Oh, because she's a flair. Enough. But Asuka ended up retaining the title, ended up locking in the Asuka lock on Charlotte. Charlotte ended up tapping. And that was that. Post-match, Nia Jax was shown watching uh, backstage. Charlie Crusoe then ended up approaching uh, her. And she ended up asking if she thinks her fight with Charlotte had anything, had anything to do with the outcome. And I end up saying that she thinks it would be a real shame for someone to kick the queen while she's down. So pretty much that was basically that. But, you know, maybe WWE is setting this up uh, for a triple threat match for the Royal Women's Championship. So it's going to be Asuka versus Charlotte versus Nia Jax. I could sense WWE... Uh, book in that match for Extreme Rules. I could sense that happening. But all in all, the match itself wasn't a bad match. It was a decent match. And then we saw Edge. Edge was uh, in a ring somewhere. And Edge ended up saying that Randy Orton won at Backlash. But he doesn't think he proved himself the better wrestler. He ended up saying that Orin did tear his triceps with the RKO. But he kicked out and kept fighting. So Edge went on and he mentions watching Raw last week. Where Orin declared himself the best wrestler ever. Edge ended up saying that he is disappointed that he didn't see the low blow coming. And that he was disappointed he didn't do it first. But he ended up saying that won't happen again. Edge ended up saying that Orrin said he lit a fire in his gut. Reminded him that he's the legend killer. Edge ended up saying that this match and this injury, not being able to pick up his daughters on Father's Day, showed him that he had something in him also. He ended up mentioning that the punk, the punk kick and what uh, Orin did to Christian, you know, Edge ended up saying that Christian has been his best friend. Walk with him through every trial and tribulation in his life. Edge ended up saying that he got upset when Orin did that uh, to Christian last week. And he ended up saying that when Orin did that, he put... You know, the superstar who's been walking around happy to be back. He put him to bed. And Edge ended up saying that he doesn't care about a wrestling match now. He's going to embarrass and emasculate Orton. So Edge went on about how he will affect Orton's family life. And that he's going to be screaming louder than the voices in Orton's head. And he said he will get into every aspect of Orton's life, tearing it down brick by brick. 
Edge then went on to say that Orin has no idea what he's done. He woke up the evil. He woke up the rated R superstar. So Edge ended up telling Randy Orton to get some sleep while he can. And that was the promo from Randy Orton, but really enjoyed this promo from uh, from Edge. I think I said Randy Orton, but I meant Edge. <laughs> but really uh, enjoyed this promo from Edge. It was, it was great. Really great promo. Very well done uh, promo. So, Charlie Crusoe, after that, Charlie Crusoe ended up catching up with Randy Orton. Randy Orton ended up uh, cutting uh, Charlie Crusoe off, and he ended up asking if she knows what a snake does when it feels threatened. He ended up saying that it's like any other animal. It's going to strike wily if you back it into a corner. He ended up saying that it's going to do what it has to do to survive. He ended up saying that both Edge and Christian tried to have their comebacks at his expense. But he's going to do what he has to do to defend his family, his livelihood, and what he has to do to survive. He ended up saying that it's Mother Nature. Warren went on to say that he sincerely hopes Edge and Christian reach a full recovery. And that he believes that they both can live long lives as they do it far, far away from him. So Oren ended up excusing himself and he ended up saying that he has something to do, something to discuss with Ric Flair. So that was basically uh, what Randy Orton had to say. And then once again, we see Charlotte. Once again, during this night, we saw Charlie Crusoe. So Charlie Crusoe had a very busy night tonight. So Charlie Crusoe ended up approaching Charlotte. Charlotte was shown icing her shoulder down. Charlotte ended up saying that she's not happy. But she gives Asuka credit. And then Nia Jax ended up uh, attacking uh, Charlotte from behind. She ended up beating Charlotte around. Nia Jax ended up slamming Charlotte's uh, arm, injured arm, into a bin. And then Nia ended up taunting her with a woo. And that was basically that. But who cares? Who the fuck cares? And then we had... Kira Tozawa versus R Troop with the Jabber Ninja Turtle 24 7 title on the line. This was garbage. We had Bobby Lashley and MVP come out. Bobby Lashley starts dropping the ninjas at ringside. Tozawa hid under the ring. And Lashley and MVP got into the ring. Lashley then, locks, then locked in the full Nelson on R Troop. And Lashley and MVP ended up heading to the back. Tozawa came back from under the ring, pinned our truth There you go. Tozawa ended up winning the match, and he's the Jabba Ninja Turtle 24-7 champion. Awful. Absolutely fucking awful. And when you come to think of it, Akira Tozawa and his ninjas makes you think of the Foot Clan from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then the giant ninja that, that has part with them, he could be, he could be Shredder. There you go. Akira Tozawa and his ninjas are the Foot Clan from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There you go. And having the Jabba Ninja Turtle 24-7 title around Akira Tozawa ends up making sense. <laughs> because of what I just said. Tozawa and his ninjas are the Foot Clan. But this was awful. God fucking awful. Then you had Sarah Schreiber. She was backstage. She was talking about uh, Charlotte outside of the trainer's room. Natalia then appeared. 
She ended up telling Sarah Schreiber that the women's division needs her leadership. And Natalia said she has an announcement, but uh, she's but we're out of time, as what Natalia ended up saying. Natalia ended up saying that we will have to wait and find out the news because she had a match with Liv Morgan. There you go. We had the match, Natalia versus Liv Morgan. Short match. Natalia got the win. Uh, walked in the sharpshooter on Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan ended up tapping out. And when Natalia came out, Lana uh, escorted Natalia to the ring. So, of course, you know, Natalia and Lana, they're best friends. So it looks like uh, Lana's going to be managing uh, Natalia. Overall, short match. And once again, we saw Charlie Caruso. She ended up stopping the big show. Yes, the... <laughs> the big show. Backstage. And they joke about how he fought off a bunch of ninjas last week. Big show ends up plugging his Netflix show. Says he's not here to have fun this week and that he's here to get payback for his friends, uh, Edge and Christian. And he says he could do what he wants, when he wants, when that angry giant inside of him comes out. So, yeah. so Big Show ended up saying that the world's largest athlete is staying in the back tonight. He ended up saying, but headed to the ring, he's headed to the ring right now is a heartless, angry giant. There you go. So when Ric Flair ended up uh, coming into the ring, Ric Flair opened up uh, his promo. He was saying his daughter Charlotte was injured earlier. She ended up saying that when she comes back, Nia Jax will be her number one target. So... Ric Flair ended up going on about how Nia Jax, how she better be afraid of Charlotte when she comes back. Nia Jax ain't going to be afraid of your daughter. So Flair ended up going on praising Randy Orton, saying how he punted Edge and Christian back into retirement uh, last week. Well, how he punted uh, Christian uh, last weekend, how he punted Edge at Backlash. So Flair ended up saying that Orton is the greatest and that he wants to tell him to his face in front of millions of people. So then out came Randy Orton. Flair ended up saying that he's been waiting for this moment. So he went on praising Randy Orton, calling him the greatest wrestler in the history of WWE. Orin ended up taking the mic, and he mentions being in the ring with half of Evolution. He ended up talking about how Flair proved he is the dirtiest player in the game last week. He went on, he ended up talking about Edge and Christian, and he ended up saying that this isn't nostalgic. It's just cementing his legacy. Warren ended up saying that he became the best wrestler ever in just the span of two days. Warren ended up talking about being the legend killer, and he got interrupted by, Well, it's the Big Show. So the Big Show made his way out. Big Show was on the mic. He ended up saying that he's heard enough. Big Show ended up saying that he's he isn't going to let Ric Flair and Randy Orton glorify what Orton did. Big Show mentioned that Edge and Christian are his friends and that Randy Orton is going to pay for what he did. He ended up saying that Orton has been a parasite since day one and that Orton is currently feeding off someone he once respected, Ric Flair. So Big Show ended up going on, and he said he believes Edge will get payback. 
but not by himself. And Big Show ended up saying that he also wants to break some bones. Orn ended up saying that Big Show won't hurt a hair on Ric Flair's head. And that he won't hurt him either because they came up together. So Orin then ended up praising Big Show, suckers up to the Big Show, and he ended up calling, you know, Big Show a future Hall of Famer and a future legend. And pretty much that was basically that. Orin ended up getting out of the ring. So it looks like we're going to begin Big Show versus Randy Orton. Yeah. Are we all excited to see that match? I know for sure I ain't. So this whole matchup is going to be fucking garbage. You know, we might be seeing that at Extreme Rules. Garbage. Then we have Sasha Banks and Bayley versus the Iconics with the, Raw, with the uh, Women's Tag Team Championship on the line. Sasha and Bayley end up retaining. Sasha end up locking in the bank statement on Peyton Royce. Post-match, you had Sasha and Bayley. They were in the ring bragging about their win. Sasha end up saying that she, she admits she gets a little jealous when Bayley talks about both of her titles. So Sasha ended up uh, loving seeing her best friend happy, and she wants to experience that as well. So Sasha ended up stepping into Bailey, and she ended up saying that she wants a title match. So Sasha ended up officially challenging Asuka for the Royal Women's Championship at Extreme Rules. So we got a swerve from Sasha, thinking that we're going to be seeing Bailey and Sasha uh, go at it, which WWE has been playing that up. You know, they, you know, we've been seeing uh, Bailey end up sending Sasha into the ring for you know a few matches. So Oscar came out. Oscar starts yelling at Sasha and Bailey. In Japanese, Asuka ended up saying that Sasha is not the boss of her. And Asuka ended up accepting the challenge. So then we saw Bailey end up attacking Asuka from the side. And uh, Asuka ended up getting beat down by both Bailey and Sasha. Asuka ended up fighting them off. Sasha ended up dropping Asuka with a backstabber into the bank statement. Sasha then end up uh, tightening the hold on Asuka. And pretty much that was basically that. So yeah, it's official. We're going to be getting Asuka versus Sasha for the World Women's Championship at Extreme Rules. And I'm like, Sasha is a SmackDown superstar. Why, is she, why are they making her challenge Asuka for the World Women's Championship? Care to explain that? So then we saw Sarah Schreiber. She approached MVP and Bobby Lashley backstage. She ended up asking if Lashley was making a statement by attacking our troop. Lashley then ended up blaming our troop on not being the WWE champion. Sorry about that, but I was saying. Uh, you know, Lashley ended up blaming uh, our truth on not being the WWE champion. And says that was their way of introducing the locker room to the Hurt Business. Yes, that's the name of MVP and Bobby Lashley's new uh, name for them. The Hurt Business. <laughs> what a god-awful name. So MVP ended up addressing Apollo Crews and his trick to, you know, him being Shawn Benjamin uh, last week. And MVP ended up talking about helping Apollo Crews be the best United States champion. And that if he refuses that help, 
then that's on him. So that was basically that. And then we saw Ruby Riot uh, backstage. Well, finally, Ruby Riot is shown on Money Eye Raw. So it was good to see her. So Ruby Riot then approached Liv Morgan backstage. And she ended up saying, not tonight. Liv ended up saying that last week and tonight didn't go her way. And that she doesn't need Ruby Riot making her feel worse. You know, Liv Morgan keeps on losing, keeps on getting buried. You know, Liv Morgan deserves better. You know, I think, you know, having Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot go and team up, I think that would uh, be better for both Ruby and Liv. You know, you can't get the Riot Squad back together because Sarah Logan is not with the WWE anymore. I'm like... Why did WWE? Why did WWE even break up the riots? The riot squad. So then we had MVP. He was out for the VIP lounge, and he ended up introducing his guest, Apollo Cruz, the United States Champion. So MVP ended up saying that it feels right to be in the ring with Apollo Cruz. He ended up talking about respecting Apollo Crews after their recent match. He ended up saying, but then Apollo Crews went and blew his knee before Money in the Bank. MVP ended up realizing Crews needs someone to help him navigate bad decisions. MVP ended up saying that this title is Crews' chance to give his daughter the life she deserves. So Apollo Crews then end up interrupting MVP and he ended up saying that he got where he is on his own and he earned the title by himself. Apollo Crews end up saying that he appreciates the offer, but his answer is still no. So MVP went on about the potential that he sees in Apollo Crews to be one of the best United States champions. And up saying that Cruz can be champion for a long time, but not without him in his corner, not without MVP in his corner. So Apollo Cruz ended up wondering how that is. He says he's been dealing with people like MVP all his career. He ended up saying that he won't let MVP or the title change who he is. So MVP ended up saying that he's tried to do this nice twice, but there won't be a third time. And whether Cruz likes it or not, the United States title is coming home with him. So Apollo Cruz ended up stepping up to MVP, and out came Shelton Benjamin. MVP made his way out of the ring, and MVP ended up speaking from ringside. And Sean Benjamin ended up taking advantage and knocked Apollo Crews out of the ring. And he ended up sending uh, Apollo Crews uh, shoulder first into the ring post. And that was that. Then Monday Night Raw went to commercial. Then we had Apollo Crews versus Sean Benjamin. This was a short match. Apollo Crews ended up winning uh, with a power bomb to Sean Benjamin. And that was that. Post-match, MVP was shown applauding on the stage. MVP ended up walking down. He tried to raise Apollo Crews' arm. Apollo Crews ended up telling MVP to keep his hands off of him. And then Bobby Lashley ended up coming from behind and locks the full Nelson on Apollo Crews. And he ended up leaving... Uh, Apollo Crews laying on the ramp. And that was that. And then we saw Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio was backstage uh, with his son Dominic. And Dominic ended up walking up to him and asks uh, Rey if he's sure about this. 
Ray ended up telling his son to trust him and let's go show the Mayanite Messiah how the Mysterio family rolls. So Monday Night Raw went to commercial. Then when uh, Monday Night Raw came back, Rey Mysterio and Dominic were in the ring. Ray ended up talking about being worried when he realized his son was going to the performance center to avenge him. He ended up saying not even the most confident father would think his son could get out of a three-on-one situation. Ray ended up saying that he's proud of Dominic for that. But Ray also said he's angry at Dominic for putting himself at risk. He ended up saying that his mom was worried. Ray ended up saying that Dominic knows he's pissed off at Seth, trying to blind him. But he's learned to accept that. And Ray ended up saying that he knows that his son is bigger than him. But he's still his dad. And no matter how strong he gets, Dominic will always be his child. Ray ended up saying that since Dominic fought for him, now it's time for him to fight for his son. Ray ended up saying that he's got this one. He ended up saying that he needs to get revenge on Seth, but he needs to do it himself. Dominic ended up saying that he understands where uh, Ray is coming from, but he's not going anywhere. You know, I'm saying this is what a family looks like, and this family wants a fight. And then Seth Rollins came out. He was walking slowly, had a mic in his hand. Rollins then spoke from the stage, and he ended up saying that he wonders if he goes to the ring to slaughter a father and son, or does he make Ray watch while he sacrifices Dominic? So Rollins ended up saying that it's not up to him and that this is all fate, prophecy, and destiny. He ended up saying that they're both in the same place at the same time and that two eyes are better than one. So Seth Rollins ended up dropping the mic, ended up walking to the ring, and Rollins ended up dropping to his knees at the bottom of the ramp. Ray Mysterio was ready for you know, to go with Seth Rollins, ready for a fight. And then you had Austin Theory and Buddy Murphy come out. Rollins ended up saying that this is on Ray. So Alistair Black and Humberto Carrillo attack Buddy Murphy and Austin Theory on the ramp. So Alistair Black and Humberto Carrillo were taking out uh, Buddy Murphy and Austin Theory. Carrillo ended up Leap into the floor, taking out both Theory and uh, Buddy Murphy against the announce table. Ray ended up coming to the ring with Dominic. Ray ended up hitting Seth with the 619. Ray and Dominic end up uh, double teaming on Seth Rollins. He was dragging Seth Rollins over to the uh, ring steps. Austin Theory and Buddy Murphy end up uh, making a save. And uh, Humberto Carrillo and Alistair Black were beaten down still on, uh, on Theory and um, Buddy Murphy. So Ray and Dominic uh, were trying to uh, you know, hold Seth Rollins to uh, you know, get you know, Seth Rollins for what he did to Ray Mysterio, where you know, they would put his eye into the... Uh, into the, to the steel of the ring steps. So uh, we had uh, Austin Theory and Buddy Murphy. They ended up holding Ray Mysterio and they made Ray watch while Seth Rollins uh, tried to put Dominic's eye into the, uh, the ring steps, into the steel. So Humberto Carrillo and Alistair Black ended up coming over with chairs and that forced Seth Rollins and Theory and Murphy to retreat up the ramp. And that was pretty much basically how Money Night Raw ended. You had Ray and 
uh, Dominic in the ring, Carrillo and Black had the chairs, chased uh, Seth Rollins and uh, his disciples off, and that was that. Really enjoyed uh, this ending to uh, Money at Raw. Like how this uh, Seth and uh, Rey Mysterio Dominic uh, storyline is progressing. Overall, that was Money Night Raw tonight. But anyways, that's it for the Money Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. And uh, definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And I will see you all with the Dynamite review. It won't be up on Wednesday. Hopefully I can get up on Thursday. So, but see you all with the Dynamite review.